So hello everyone, this is Dr. João Alfredo Kleiner from VetWeb Veterinary Ophthalmology here in Brazil, South Brazil, Curitiba, Paraná State. And today uh, we're going to show you a live surgery, cataract surgery in a Schnauzer patient. So we're going to wait a little bit more for people to start joining our session. I would like for you guys that I start joining now to state your name and where you're from in the comments below the video. And then we can start to know each other before showing the case. Before going to the surgical theater, uh, I'm gonna show you a little PowerPoint presentation about the case uh, with some pictures about the, the cataract and say a little bit more about the instruments and everything is going to be using uh, during the surgery today. So the team is already preparing the dog for the surgery and we will be joining them shortly. Bom dia Pedro, how are you? Good to see you here man. You're always the first one to join the sessions. Thanks, thanks for the support. Felipe Volke, my dear master, thank you for joining us. <coughs> Merit from Estonia, hey, how are you? Good to meet you. So it's always uh, a challenge to do a live surgery because everything can happen during the surgery. This is the, the fourth addiction already. So I did it uh, three times already, this kind of transmission, live transmission, and hopefully everything is gonna be smooth and well today also. Jelena, welcome. Igor. Bom dia, Igor. So it's 9 a.m. already, so it, it is the, the right time we told you guys we are going to start the transmission. So I'm going to go through the PowerPoint presentation now to show you guys a little bit about the case today, okay? So this is a live cataract surgery, fourth addiction. Um, my name is Dr. João Alfredo Kleiner from VetWeb Veterinary Ophthalmology here in Brazil. This is my email. If you guys wanna share some um, cases or wanna send a message for me, I will be glad to help everybody out. So the case today is a nine-year-old female schnauzer that has a bilateral diabetic cataract. So both eyes affected by the same time. So usually we see that in diabetic uh, dogs. They usually develop cataract very quick. So no matter if you, if you're able to control the, the diabetic state use the insulin, inject the insulin, uh, on the long run every single one of them will develop cataract. So this is the image, pictures that we took recently from this dog. So we have the left eye here and the right eye here. So usually uh, diabetic cataract they develop quite similar bilaterally and there is an advantage, we can say there is an advantage in a disease, but in cataract uh, due to diabetes, usually the lens are easily cracked because the lens start absorbing water 
during the opacification, during the progression of the disease. So the cataract is usually easily fragment, fragmented by the phaco unit and easily aspirated. So this is the left eye. So we have a little bit of color change in, in the iris due to the lens induced UV iris. And this is the right eye. So little uh, deposits on the lens capture here and a little bit of lens induced UV iris. Very, very quiet and calm eye bilaterally. So this is the ERG of this patient. So this is a, a quick RET check doing only with the single white lead flash. So this is the right eye. So usually we have two major waves in the ERG. So this is the wave one and wave two. And this is the left eye, wave one and wave two. So quite a nice presentation of the ERG. So talking about the positioning for you that already had seen some of my live surgeries, I do the, the positioning of the patient is quite the same among the species. So for dogs, for lions, for tigers, for birds, for cats, whatever. So I usually I tie the nose with some drape, just like so, showing the, here in the picture. And I'm sitting on the uh, front part of the table and I angle a little bit the, the head. So considering if I want to operate the right eye or the left eye and tie the front legs behind to the table. So we have a, a lot of free space for the anesthesiologist to work on the patient and monitoring it during the procedure. And this is the gas anesthesia, microscope, and usually phaco unit by the side. So this is a tiger we did in 2014 here in South Brazil. And the position is just the same. You can appreciate that no matter is a 350 kilograms patient or a 10 kilograms dog, the position is just like the same. Okay, I feel much more comfortable doing the surgery uh, using this positioning. Another trick that I do to avoid the using of blepharostat, usually I do not do use the blepharostat because it causes uh, external pressure on the eyeball and I don't like that. Sometimes, sometimes you have a uh, vitreous expansion syndrome that is being caused by the blepharostat. So I do not use blepharostat anymore. Instead of, I usually put some stitches holding the eyelid up or down. So this is a regular 3-0-4-0 nylon suture that I retract the eyelids just doing like this. We're gonna see it uh, during the surgery today. We're gonna see me doing, you guys gonna appreciate me doing this technique, okay? So this is my FACO unit. I have been using this FACO system for 10 years already. This is a quite nice machine that gives you a lot of different settings and it's very powerful and it's uh, a portable, quite a portable unit so I can carry around the country to perform surgeries in other states. So I like that very much. It's a touch screen unit. So it usually comes with a, a cart just like this. So I have the pedal and a cassette and works very good. I love it. 
We're gonna be using some different instruments during the surgery today. This is two of them. Uh, the company that manufactured those instruments is called Mastel Surgical Instruments. So this is a nice singer tripart so we can hold the eyeball for making the incision. This is an optical zone marker that I use to make sure I'm doing the capture axis on the right size and very centralized. So you touch the cornea with this instrument and you just go ahead and follow the circle that is marked on the cornea. So makes it easier to do a perfect and centralized capsule rexis. This is some other instruments we're going to be using today. The same company, Mastel. And this is a katana diamond blade of one millimeter wide. So this is for the port incision. I do the two hands technique for the fake emulsification. And this is a nice uh, 2.8 to 3.5 millimeter diamond blade for the main incision. This instrument is called Gimbal Super Stealth. So this is very, both of them are very sharp instruments. So you can make a very nice corneal incision very easily. Another different instrument we're gonna be using today. It's a different FACO tip uh, designed by the same company. So this one has a little bit of angle and you can appreciate that the front part of the FACO tip has this hexagonal shape. So with this technology, you can crack, you can chop the nucleus easier. It's very good for our patients that have a very hard cataract. So it's a very nice, very sharp instrument, but you need to be uh, very skilled to use those fake tips because they're very sharp and if you inadvertently touch the posterior capsule, it's gonna be ripping apart very, very easy. So make sure you have a little bit of training using the standard fake tips before jumping into this uh, very sharp and different uh, custom-made uh, fake tips. So the patient preparation, we do a little uh, mitriasis using 10% uh, phenylephrine and tropicamide. Usually I do like uh, one hour before the procedure. And to centralize the eyeball, I use the periocular block with 2% lidocaine, preservative free. We're gonna see that during the, the transmission today. So I do not use uh, any systemic neuromuscular block at all. So I feel safer doing, doing like this. Some people like the neuromuscular blocks, but you know, it's a personal preference. And for the maintenance of the anesthesia, isoflurane. So this is all the patient information. And so the patient is almost ready at the surgical theater. We're gonna be jumping in there and we're gonna get back with you guys shortly. So we're gonna be talking through the procedure while I'm doing the surgery. So step by step, we're gonna do the surgery uh, a little bit slower than usual, so you guys can appreciate all the surgical procedure, the surgical techniques that we're gonna be using today. And at the end of the surgery, 
we're going to open for questions and answers, okay? So just answering just one question here by Piwish Dubey. We're going to do a fake emulsification, okay? Uh, we do not use the extra capsular or intra capsular extraction anymore for a long time because the fake emulsification have uh, far way better results. So this is all the social media that you can follow my work. This is an Instagram uh, channel. This is the Facebook channel and my personal web page. YouTube, you guys are watching this surgery uh, through the YouTube. So you can follow our, my work from the YouTube also. And I would like to invite you all to check out our Atlas. I have been putting this work together for more than three years already. We have contributors all over the world with nice uh, high definition pictures with detailed description of the pictures. So you pay just only one time and get full access of the Atlas. So I strongly encourage you guys to visit the website vetiatlas.com and check it out. I'm gonna leave you guys here with a little fake emulsification movie um, in a, a fake surgery that we did in uh, three holler monkeys a couple years ago. And I'm gonna jump in the surgical theater, scrub it in, and the next time we're gonna be talking together here. We're gonna be in the surgical field already and explaining step by step what am I doing, okay? So you guys are gonna have the full vision of the microscope and everything that I'm seeing, you're gonna be seeing together, okay? So see you guys soon, enjoy the movie, we'll be right back.
So hello you all, we're back. So we're gonna start this surgery doing the eyelid tacking that we talked about. So this is a 4-0 suture that I'm going to use to retract the eyelid. So it's quite easy to do. The first bite you take like 3 millimeters away from the eyelid and then the second bite you take like a two centimeters from the eyelid you know, just do a simple interrupted suture so I already did one now we're gonna do a couple more here on the lower eyelid So using this technique, you avoid the usage of the blepharostat. So you still have a, start having a nice presentation of the eyeball. This is 5% uh, iodine for disinfection of the ocular surface you put, you just put some drops on the ocular surface and with a q-tip we're gonna spread the solution all over the eye so this is the the first step before doing the periocular block, okay? So, just like so. So now we're gonna do the periocular block. So this is 2% lidocaine preservative free. Usually I do four points of block using 0.3 or 2.4 ml in each side. a little bleeding there it's common but with a little pressure here here you're gonna resolve that So wait a couple minutes and then we're gonna check if we, we need some more external pressure to put the, the eye in the center of the field. So here you're gonna inject Ringer's lactate to push the globe more to the center and have a better visualization so you can appreciate that the eyeball is almost centralized a little bit more lactate ringer 
So I'm going on the back part of the eye and the middle aspect of the eye. Little flush of the fornix of the conjunctiva. I think I'm gonna put one more stitch on the upper eyelid for you guys to appreciate better. Make that very nice and centralized so you, you can appreciate the surgery better. So one more stitch here. So make sure before you start the surgery to have a very nice presentation of the surgical field. So you don't have to mess around with that during the procedure. So put one more stitch here on the upper eyelid and maybe one more on the lower eyelid. So you can see that we already have a nice mitrisis. And this is the, the left eye we are doing the surgery, okay? So you see that the eye is already centralized, very nice. I'm gonna retract a little bit more this lower medial aspect of the lower eyelid for you guys to appreciate much better what we are gonna be doing inside the eye. There you go. Perfect. So now we are ready to go. Very nice presentation of the eye, very centralized, ready for the surgery. So let, let's put the drape on. Is the image and sound good enough for you guys? Can anyone tell me, please? So looks like it's very good for you guys also, okay? So I'm gonna put the drape on and we're gonna start the surgery.
Thank you for the feedback, Felipe. setting up some instruments here and we're gonna put a drape on and start the FACO so let's put this drape here Very important, so just like you watching my assistant moisturing the ocular surface all the time. So here it is. So we will start with the port incision using the katana diamond blade that I showed you earlier. So usually I do here at three o'clock position. So you just watch it be holding the eyeball with the singer tripod. Now we're gonna put tripon glue with a little air bubble mixed with epinephrine and lidocaine preservative free inside the eye. So air bubbles and the dye with the mixture. I'm gonna wait couple minutes now filling the anterior chamber with the viscoelastic this is hyaluronic acid I like to use hyaluronic acid so pushing out these bubbles so we have a better vision of what am I gonna do So now moving for the main incision with the 3.2 diamond blade and I'm gonna hold the eyeball with this torton ring. So this is the diamond blade, make sure you do a two step incision. So those are very nice, very sharp instruments. I'm gonna try to push those air bubbles outside the eye, outside the central part of the field. Maybe I'm gonna aspirate them. So try to do a little aspiration. Of those bubbles. Here we go. And then we're gonna start our capture rexes. So we're gonna do a little puncture here on the anterior capsule. You see how the tripon glue dye dyed very good the, the anterior capsule. So this is the marker 
optical zoom marker. You see, maybe you can appreciate the ring that creates on the cornea surface. So you can follow this ring to do a good gastroexis. I like to start using the, a little incision, like our smiley incision with the scissors. And then continue the capture axis with the ultrata forceps. So you need to master the technique clockwise and counterclockwise and go easy. Always you know, grasping on the vertices. Try to do the, the best you can to have like a very centralized and with a 5 to 5.5 millimeters wide. Just a little bit more here. There you go. Good. So capture axis is done. Now we're gonna make the cataract mobile doing the hydro dissection. So I, I like to flush out a little bit of the viscoelastic so you create a path for the BSS to go outside the eye. So very gentle with a 3 ml syringe, losing the cortical part of the cataract, both sides right underneath the anterior capsule till you can rotate the nucleus. So be gentle during this maneuver. Otherwise you can have a posterior capsule rupture. See, it's almost free, entirely free. There you go. Okay, good. So now we're ready to start the fake emulsification. Just get the fake end piece here. So stage one to enter the eye. So this is that special fake tip that I showed you guys in the beginning of the surgery. And on my left hand, I have a chopper. Just take this drape a little bit out of the way. So this is my chopper. And we start emulsifying the cataract. So usually I like to do the stop and chop or fake chop technique. So we start with this groove here. You see that my left hand is always holding the nucleus, so you don't, don't have tension on the zonules. So rotate the nucleus a little bit. So I'm doing the second groove here. And start cracking the nucleus. feels not that hard, this cataract. So, so far so good. We're gonna do another groove here. Go 
rotate a little bit more. So you see that both of my instruments are helping me to rotate the nucleus. Try to crack here. There you go. And we're gonna start conquering the fragments. So make sure you, you maintain the fake tip on the capsule rex's border so it's safer. So we're just separating here the first big chunk of the catra. There we go. We start emulsifying it. Nice. It's cracking very easy. You, you can appreciate that, you see? So conquering more pieces. This cortical part here is softer. So we see how sharp is the fake tip. This is, this is a very nice fake tip. So 50% of the cataract is gone already. You see that all the time I keep my phaco tip in the center of the field. So I let the aspiration and the ultrasound do the job. Nice. So the last chunk. Good. Little eggshell here. Start aspirating a little of the cortical part. This is a little egg shell here. I got it. Nice. So far, so good. Now we're gonna switch to the irrigation aspiration handpiece. In order to remove all the cortical material of the cataract. So now we don't need ultrasound anymore. Just changing the fake tip here. There you go. So this is an angle irrigation aspiration handpiece. This is one of the most important important part of the surgery, remove all the cortical material because it causes a very bad uh, lens induced uveitis. We have a very nice image of the retina already. So we're going to start removing all the cortical part. So 
So make sure you be gentle during this step to avoid biting the posterior capsule. Take these bubbles out a little bit more. You see how I do? I grab the edge of the cortex and then move it toward the center part. So rips off the cortical part of the lens capsule. Little bit more here. This is the worst part, the 11 to 12 o'clock part. Little bit more here. Take those bubbles out too. Looks good. Okay. Looking very good. Let's change the irrigation aspiration tip so we can get rid of those fragments of cortex. So just like I told before, it's very important to remove the majority of the cortical fragments. Nice. So we start preparing the interocular lenses here to do the implantation. And I'm gonna fold the IOL under the microscope so you guys can appreciate the technique of folding the IOL inside the cartridge. So this is the IOL that I'm using most today. This is from Envision. So this is a 12 millimeter wide IOL. So this is the shape of the IOL. So it's a foldable acrylic hydrophobic IOL. So we start putting some uh, viscoelastic inside the cartridge so the IOL can slide off easily. Fold it. So make sure you put right in the center of the cartridge. This IOL has a different marker, okay? This is an MD8, so the upper mark is to the right. Every other IOL in the world is the upper mark is to the left. So make sure if you buy the MD8, you put the upper mark to the right. So click it, it's folded. Now you're gonna insert inside the injector. 
just like so. And advance the IOL a little bit further. gonna do the implantation so usually I use BSS to inflate the capture bag instead of using the viscoelastic so it's less surgical time so I got the chamber maintenance on the left hand so I constantly inject BSS inside the anterior chamber to inflate the capsule bag and then now we can do the implantation inside the bag there we go, just like that Perfect. So now I'm gonna do a little irrigation aspiration. Centralize the IOL and put some stitches on the corner and we're done. Very good, so far so good. Nice. So this is the irrigation aspiration, a little bit of polishing of the anterior capsule. So when, when you do this part of the surgery, you move the IOL around and usually you can aspirate more cortical material, just like you just saw now. So, so far so good guys, I'm going to finish up, do a little polishing of the anterior capsule. There you go, very nice. So make sure you got rid of all the cortical material. Nice. Very good indeed. A little bit more aspiration here. With some cortical material left capsule posterior capsule looks very good very nice it's very transparent Nice. We're about done here. So put some stitches on the cornea. Let me improve the image here for you guys. So you're gonna watch a knot that I like to do. It's called the butterfly knot. So the suture is 90 nylon. I like to use 90 nylon. Make sure it's from a good company, a good quality. 
so the needle is very sharp so you're gonna do the, the butterfly knot usually I suture only the main incision I do not put any stitches on the side part hardly ever let me just adjust the suture material here there you go so you take one bite the distal part and on the proximal part like that so this is the first step okay and then you do it again so it's a two simple interrupted suture so you try to do like a mirror image of the first suture so the same depth and then you do the knot so when you do the knot the shape of the suture is just like uh, the wings of the butterfly that's why I call it the butterfly knot There you go. So the first knot I do uh, double and then followed by three to four single knots. Just like that. So usually the one butterfly knot holds very good the incision and usually don't need to put any more suture so let's cut the suture off nice we're gonna inflate the anterior chamber now and do a little stromo edema on the cornea to make sure the incision is very sealed So this is the corneal edema. So on the side part, I, I like to do a little edema also. So you see how nice the butterfly knot holds the incision. So a little edema on the both sides, looks good. Let's dry it off a little bit with a Q-tip and check the incisions. Looks good. Make sure you don't leave the eye too hard. Yeah, it's very sealed. Looks good. 
yeah very good now we're gonna use uh, beta metazone 0.3 ml subconjunctival I do that in every single patient of mine since I start doing cataract surgery and I, I learned to use this drug with my very good friend and my old time master Philippe Volk so just like that and that's it very nice I'm gonna focus here a little bit different angles for you guys to appreciate the end result of the surgery so it looks very good very transparent very nice very centralized IOL so the butterfly knot there very good very nice okay all good all good i'm gonna go back to the office and then we will start some questions and answers okay very nice very nice Okay, guys, thank you all for watching. Thank you for cheering for me and wishing for the best during the surgery. It was not a hard surgery, it was very smooth. So the, the result was very good. So now we can entertain some questions. If you guys have some, I will be glad to answer them. Philippe Volk, my dear friend, thank you very much for joining me this, this morning. I appreciate that. Well, Philippe Volk asking here, do you think it, uh, it is interesting to aspirate under the IOL? If you using uh, viscoelastic, yes, to remove the viscoelastic behind the IOL. But when I do this technique with BSS, uh, the surgery is quicker and we don't have to worry about aspirating under the IOL and we do not polish anymore the posterior capsule only when you do the only when you're removing the the cortical material so just that no no aspiration under the IOL any more questions Thank you all for watching that, I appreciate that. If you're not live here watching the video and if you have any questions, you can uh, put the questions on the comments and then I can answer later on, okay? Rodrigo Bastos, ele está perguntando aqui. I'm gonna read in Portuguese and then read in English. Bom dia, obrigado por compartilhar. Na ida de secção, qual seringa utilizou? Eu uso uma seringa de 3 ml. E a agulha de ida de secção que eu uso é uma agulha de 27 gauge, bem fininha. Então, com essa agulha, você consegue fazer uma ida de secção bem legal. So, uh, Rodrigo Barros is asking about the 
hydrodissection, what syringe I used. So I used the 3 ml syringe, okay? And the needle is uh, 27 gauge. Any more questions? So I really do appreciate everybody that had joined us this morning for watching this live surgery. Uh, it's always a challenging do a live transmission and everything anything can happen during the this procedure and we're gonna be doing more of this in the future oh there's another question here não há necessidade de dar cambalhotas no núcleo após a hidrodissecção não você tem que só deixar ele móvel em torno do eixo dele é dar cambalhota no núcleo, acho que não é uma boa técnica, pois você pode rasgar a cápsula anterior. So, Rodrigo Bastos, Barros asked here if there is no necessity to do, uh, flip over the nucleus after the hydrodissection. And I told him no, uh, because you can have a chance to rip off the capsule axis and do a radial uh, tearing of the capsule. So, just make sure he's moving around his axis, its axis freely. So no need to flip over the nucleus. Thank you, Philippe Evoke. Appreciate that. So I think that's it. If you have any more questions, just make sure you leave in the comments and I go back and answer later on, okay? I sure do appreciate all the audience today and make sure you follow our uh, social media to know much more about veterinary ophthalmology and I'm gonna see you guys in the future very soon, okay? Thank you very much. Have a nice Christmas, you all, and a wonderful new year, okay? See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.